Welcome to the next part of how nobody would handle 40k. I think this is a little bit better than how to fix 40k. I hate those titles. This continues on with the idea of that I used yeah, my class 5 dark wizard powers to gain control over Games Workshop and land myself the CEO position with a 5 year term. Since starting working on this, I had considered what kits and would make the most sense to uh, unite the two lines. Honestly, I had been mostly uncomfortable with the idea of screwing people over, but it was an inev inevitability that certain kits would get left out. So this is my attempt to deal with this. So if a unit is not mentioned, consider it cut in the case of this setup as it was either pointless or just a needless variant of another kit. Additionally, also assume in this case that all kits would be in errant armor with Tacticus mixed in with all of the units regardless of this uh, mark being at the new scale. With that we'll dive into the kits from the Primaris line that would be included or altered to fit into the new rejoined line. Finally, I would also place my desired price point for future infantry kits at roughly $35 to bring them more towards a casual purchase rather than placing them at odds with video games and other such uh, higher price points. Across the board, I would want prices to slowly drift to a lower price point over time with a point of getting them into even more stores like Walmart. So first up would be Veteran Scouts, a 10-man kit at about the same standard price as I said, and it would be the Eliminator, the, uh, let's see, the Eliminator, and Cursor, and Infiltrator kits all mixed into one set with all of the options to fit all three of those out. And the idea would be that these are Veteran Marines who've made it all the way up to being Tacticals and instead of remaining in the tacticals, they have gone back to the scout chambers to take on the far more high risk missions that they can't trust to the initiates and offend the scouts. Which would include various things from sabotage, on and on and on. And I thought this would be a really interesting kit to bring in because you could use it for certain armies like the sneaky ones like Raptors, Raven Guard, etc. to kind of give them that sneaky uh, feel and kind of play into their way of warfare a little bit more because you'd have mines, scramblers, all, all the fun stuff that these kits have as a uh, kit introduced and be more in line with a tactical so it could shift some armies to preferring a veteran scouts kit that could be counted as infantry or however you want to classify it line on and on and on and um, give those chapters kind of a reason and or at least a slight interest to use these to represent uh, their forces a little bit more than maybe the tactical with a little bit more of its weapon flexibility towards general brawling combat. So that's where I think this would fall in. The Reaver, for example, would go over to Chaos and become a Night Lord's kit. Next up is the Tactical Squad Reborn. Again, it would be at the projected price of about 35 bucks. So these are the things that we would be changing up. There would be no grav weapons. Grav weapons would move over to the Chaos Legions, where other archaic technology would go. In their place, you would get things such as the heavy bolt pistol and the bolt rifle variations and the bolt rifle as a special weapon to represent kind of like a squad automatic weapon, the, you know, the heavy gunner kind of guy and lean into the idea that the Imperium is pushing into variants of bolt weapons as opposed to uh, recreating ancient technologies or lost technologies. The entire squad would be in errant armor with uh, variations from arms, helmets, backpacks, and legs of older marks, and there would be included within it Tacticus armor options as well so that we can unite the intercessors with the tactical squad 
we would eliminate a number of the intercessor variations because they have no place, yada yada. Um, we also want to kind of bring down the number of kits because that's one big problem I see in the future and will lead to calling in the future as well, as we've seen with Age of Sigmar and the Stormcast. Um, they would, of course, be in the new scale. That's what I would do for them. All right, this next part is the Marine Patrol Vehicle. Now, I took this from the, um, well, the Shawnee, or Shauna, I don't know how to say the name right, but the Desert Patrol Vehicle. And I thought, hey, we have the Mario Double Dash Kit, and we have the Assault Bike, why don't we just roll what those both units achieve into one unit that doesn't look like it was either ripping off um, Double Dash or hasn't had any upgrade since it was brought in and here we go. So it would replace both kits but it would be fulfilling effectively the same role as a kind of fast moving support kind of weapon. <clears throat> There would potentially, in my opinion, be a scout version, uh, much like you see with the scout um, speeder. And, well, it moves fast, has a lot of weapons to throw out some decent damage, but can be knocked out with relative ease. And that's how I would trim both of those units down and bring them into one concept. So just imagine a 40k dune buggy in that style that could have things all kinds of different weapon options on it. I think that'd be pretty cool, so let's move on to the next. The Blade Guard Vets would be rolled into the Stern Guard kit. They would be bumped up to a five-man unit, and effectively they would represent a Honor Guard of sorts that any chapter could have, or a, a more melee-focused assault or defensive unit. I think it fits into the kind of situation or the concepts of the Stern Guard veterans. They both play a little bit differently, but when you'd have both kits having all of the options to make both, I think it would just be a better idea. And we could do have a lot of fun kind of going, oh, well, they're this kind of unit, and that's how I would roll them into one, because I see them as being one of the units that makes some degree of sense. And uh, well, we'll move on to this next one. The War Suit. The Invictus Tactical War Suit and the Centurion. How I would handle this in is a really basic way. I would take the general look and aesthetic of the Invictus War Suit, and I would take the entire loadouts from both versions of the Centurion, and I'd replace the weapons that the Invictus has with that. Therefore, I would make a kind of Centurion war suit. Um, and I, I just think it would make sense. I'd get rid of the stutters on it because it's dumb. And we would get rid of the fat Hulkbuster suit that's been wandering around trying to figure out why it exists called the Centurion. I think... Combining these two would be pretty nice and an eloquent way of retiring these two kits and then kind of giving them a role that kind of sort of existed but didn't. Ideally, I would probably make it um, a three-man kit, but I could be persuaded just to make it one and have something in between the two. So let's move on. There's no slide for this, but effectively with the Assault Marines... I'd roll um, five more uh, five more guys into that team, so it would be standard a box of ten. And the main uh, fixes I would apply to it, besides moving this stupid little jump jet that's on the back of the legs and would probably just make you spin around and slam headfirst into the ground, is I would add in the various other types. I'd bring back the original tactical... Uh, or the Assault Marine style jump pack with actually a couple variants in there so people could maybe get like a Mark IV, Mark I, maybe a couple things in there so that people can have a few different ones to represent while well, they're pulling out their old stock. Of course, the errant armor would be replacing most of it with some Tacticus in there, 
But that's about all I would do with that kit besides increasing the number of Marines. And I think it's absolutely ridiculous that it's that price for five guys. But that's just me. Maybe I'm insane. So those are some of the things I would do. Uh, so this has actually been a bit of a pain to make this series. Mostly because... I just don't think any of this would ever result in a choice or decision by GW to do anything like any of this. And let's be perfectly honest, um, there is no reason for the Primaris that does not apply to the OG Space Marines. If anyone really thinks that they wouldn't sell if they were just upscaled, I I don't know what to say to that person because that's primarily the only reason the primaris sell. I believe that if some if GW saw what I was suggesting and went down the road I did, there'd be very very few people from a lore perspective very upset with my uh way of directing things back to a more less stupid way of handling the Primaris and the uh, original Space Marines. The only people who'd be upset, and they would reasonably be upset, are the people who would buy kits that GW never intended to fully support. And that sucks. So, I hope this was at least entertaining, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.